Here are 100 tips, tricks, and trivia that you may not have known about Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. Before getting to this, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, as this does actually help the channel out significantly more than you possibly could know. And if you have subscribed already, thank you ever so much. Leave a like on the video and also Feel free to leave your tips and tricks and trivia and stuff like that in the comments and maybe I'll do a part two to this at some point in the future. But with that said, once again, here are 100 things that you may not have known about Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. Vados will appear in the Time Nest if you complete the Universe 6 vs Universe 7 Destroyer Tournament DLC. Before this, she's nowhere to be seen in the time nest, but if you get the DLC and complete that part of the story mode, Vados will be a permanent fixture in the time nest. For some reason, they hid her away. There's no explanation to this, but yeah, Vados will appear in the time nest if you get that DLC and complete it. If you don't have it, she will never appear in the time nest. If you go out on a time patrol in the time nest by interacting with the time rift right next to the partner customization robot and then you click return to time nest then restart the game instead of then loading into canton city directly you'll then instead load directly into the time nest there's a namekian in canton city that had his name change uh, i'm not gonna say what it, it what it used to be or what it, or even what it is right now but you can see right here this Namekian had a slightly different name when the game first came out and it was changed because it sounded similar to another word which is widely considered to be offensive. <laughs> There's also another character in Condon City by the name of Amy right next to the accessory shop. Now, Amy was the apparent winner of a contest or a sort of like a vault that Bandai Namco held just before Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 was released back in 2016. This was a bit of a website thing where you could go and create your own time patroller and the time patroller with the most votes would later be added into Xenoverse 2 and if memory serves correctly this was added in I believe the fourth update the DB Super Pack. Or if you talk to Amy, you can get her battle suit for your character straight away, right off the bat. But what's interesting about this is that Amy wasn't the actual true winner. There was at least two characters that had more votes than Amy. Those characters were a margin that resembled and was named Mickey Mouse and another margin that was named and resembled Pikachu. It's naturally obvious as to why these weren't added into the game. It's just interesting to note that Amy isn't the actual true winner of that specific contest. You can get a guaranteed Dragon Ball to drop if you make a new character and talk to this character in Canton City right here. The reward from defeating this character is, I believe, it's the four-star Dragon Ball, but if there's a Dragon Ball that you don't have, for example, if you've got all of them apart from, again, for example, the second-star Dragon Ball, the two-star Dragon Ball, what have you, by defeating this character, you'll get that Dragon Ball or any other Dragon Ball that you don't have. You can do this as much as you want until you've got a completed set, then you won't get any more until you, you then use the Dragon Balls on Shenron. And again, this is a guaranteed drop from defeating this character. The only, I guess, downside towards this is that this can only be done once ever per character. So if you've got one slot free and you need to get Dragon Balls, just go and make a new character, defeat Raditz, then talk this character, again, that's by the school in Canton City or the Time Patrol Academy, whatever it's called, defeat her and you'll then get one Dragon Ball that you don't currently have. Your starting moveset can change depending on which of the three options you pick when you first make your character. Those three options are, I like it up close, nice and personal, I'll hang back and blast them from afar, and close or far, I keep it balanced. If you click the first option, I like it up close, nice and personal, your starting moveset will be Meteor Crash, Meteor Blow, Super Guard, the Full Power Energy Blast Volley, and Super Front Jump. 
if you select I'll hang back and blast them from afar, your starting moves there will be the consecutive energy blast, energy shot, energy charge, as well as the full power energy blast volley and the super back jump. And if you select close or far, I keep it balanced, your starting moveset will be Meteor Crash, the consecutive energy blast super attack, after image, as well as full power energy volley and your evasive will be instant raise. Side note, if you right off the bat, you can make one character with all three of these options, then delete the other two characters and you'll keep the skill. So you can mix and match right off the bat. Some of these skills are incredibly useful and flat out good. For example, Instant Rise is widely considered one of, if not the best evasive skill in the game because it does its job. The consecutive energy blast super attack is an incredibly underrated key based super attack and energy charge, despite it being the worst charge attack in the game, starting off from the very beginning, that's, it can be incredibly, I can't stress this enough, it can be incredibly incredibly useful. Your stats can change depending on what body type and height you pick when you're making your character. On the screen right now, you can see a screenshot of a comment I found, which I personally found very useful. So pause to read this comment and to learn it and understand it and stuff like that, if you so wish. All five of the current avatar or CAC or custom character, whatever you call it, all five of the current CAC avatar, again, whatever, races in the game right now, all have different passive abilities. For male margins, they can take, well, they do take less damage the more stamina they have and vice versa. Female margins have incredibly fast stamina recovery. Saints get a, well, get an attack increase, a Zenkai boost when they have flashing red health. Earthlings have auto key recovery and they get an attack increase when they have max key. Namekians have health regen whenever they have flashing red health and the freezer race has the fastest speed out of anyone in the game. Again, there are a few more to this, so it's not limited to just those things I've just mentioned, but I think that's a good starting point, at least for what this video is, I guess. There used to be a completely harmless glitch in Canton City, where if you went to around this area in the old world, you could actually fly through the mountain and go inside of Canton City. If I remember at least, this was removed, or rather they fixed it, in Legendary Pack 1, the Legendary Pack 1 free update. But it was just cool to see, I believe, Goku and Oob and Supreme Kai of Time herself, as well as just some random Time Patrollers were all over the place here, and some of them didn't even have dialogue if you spoke to them. I understand why it was removed, but this you couldn't exploit this. There's nothing to gain really from doing this other than just to see Canton City from the inside out. And again, unfortunately, it was removed. On the PS4 version of Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, there is an option to select old Canton City and new Canton City on the title menu. This doesn't do anything. The only reason this was added was because on the PS4 version of Xenoverse 2, they were running out, apparently they were running out of space or memory to save specific online things such as your world tournament records, your TP rank, nicknames and titles that you could get from event rewards, favorites that you've made in terms of time patrols that you've favorited, gift information and stuff like that. You can still log in to old Canton City, but no new events have been on there or will be on there. For example, raids, world tournaments, the Freezer Invasion event, as well as the Canton City TV. All of those are in the new Canton City server. For some reason, whenever you use body change on Kid Boo or as well as Kid Boo, Super Venus Mold Kid Boo, <laughs> for some reason, his face does this weird warping thing. It's all, it only appears on this version of Boo and no other character as far as, as I'm aware. I don't know if this is a reference to pure evil Boo that Margin Boo battled to the, and then got eight to then become Super Boo. But it's just interesting that this is the only Margin Boo character in the game that this happens to. Very bizarre and a little bit eerie, to be honest. Despite being able to make a pure blood sane custom character, for some reason, whenever you turn Super Saiyan, your hair doesn't spike up, 
with the exception of Super Saiyan 3. And that's just a completely different hair model anyway. But for any of the other transformations, or Super Saiyan transformations, as of right now, whenever you transform into any of those Super Saiyan forms, your hair just changes colour, and the appearance outside of the colour doesn't change at all. Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 is currently the best selling Dragon Ball console game of all time, selling just over 7 million units. You can only win by using self-destruct online if you're not the host of the lobby. For example, if you are the host of the lobby and someone joins and you have max health and they have as little health as possible without actually being defeated, if you then go for self-destruct and it connects, you won't win regardless. You cannot win by being the host of the lobby. This is never explained. It's assumed that it's a bit of a glitch or an oversight because it doesn't make sense at all. But yeah, just weird. If you equip any of the crystal raid skills and then go into photo mode, your character will have the villainous mode aura. Although, unfortunately, this doesn't work online in a normal one versus one. If you recover on an invisible ground, you can actually recover by using a double-handed backflip. For the purposes of this video, I spent a good 20 minutes trying over and over and over again to try and get this but i personally couldn't do it i have done it in videos in the past but it's something that i don't know what the exact timing is i spent a long time trying to do it couldn't do it feel free to try it yourself and let me know if there's any specific trick to it but again this only works if it's an invisible ground rather than a solid flat surface both legendary super saiyan brody from dragon ball z as well as full power Super Saiyan Broly from Dragon Ball Super Broly are the only two characters in the game right now to have a different colour for their basic key blasts. Instead of it being yellow, theirs are green to represent legendary Super Saiyan, full power Super Saiyan, stuff like that. Yes, Ribran does fire hearts, but at the same time, those aren't necessarily key blasts. They are, but it's like it's not like it's a reskin of the key blast. Just a bit of a disclaimer right there. Majub has a somewhat secret second preset, which is Majub in the Oob outfit and a moveset that more so resembles Oob from the end of Dragon Ball Z. To get this, you do need the appropriate DLC, I believe at least, which is DLC 10, also known as officially Ultra Pack 2. You do need to go and buy the Oob gift in the TP Metal Store if it's available. Then go and talk to Oob, who should be by the World Tournament Arena next to Hit. Talk to him, hand over the gift, and you'll get the second preset of Majub. Mecha Freezer appears in the Xenoverse 2 intro, but as of right now, he's not anywhere else to be seen in the game outside of his quote-unquote outfit that you can wear for your characters. He's not a playable character, and apart from appearing in the intro cinematic, he doesn't appear anywhere else at all, as of right now, in the entire game. You can get the Flying Nimbus vehicle by talking to this character flying in the sky in Canton City once you learn how to fly, basically as in when you defeat Final Form Freezer and Final Form Cooler in the Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 story mode. Despite it being the flying Nimbus, it doesn't fly. <laughs> Doldon Ray is a key based super attack which takes no key to actually use. And if you're playing with limitations off and you have the Doldon Ray Super Soul, you'll recover about one bar of key each time you go for a Doldon Ray. Regardless whether or not the Doldon Ray is successful or if it's blocked or if it misses or what have you, this makes for a very nice alternative to using, you know, for example, a charge skill, for example, energy charge, full power charge, maximum burst, ultimate charge, etc. Do keep in mind that it is pretty spammy. However, certain attacks can go through super armor. For example, the basic grab, as well as skills such as super god fist, savage strike, as well as gigantic 
rage. You can no longer leave or kick someone from your lobby if it's a ranked lobby or a world tournament lobby. This was done to try and stop people from boosting the leaderboards, which it worked up until a certain point, but it is something that you still technically could do. If anything, it may just take a couple of extra minutes longer to do. Long story short, boosting in Dragon Ball Universe 2 is that you'll make a room and you'll battle someone, presumably yourself, on a different console to get the points to then boost up on the world leaderboards. Again, it's not really been fixed. It kind of has, but not really and you just can't kick people once two people join, again, either a ranked room or a world tournament lobby. If you see someone in Condon City or in a lobby, whether it be a parallel quest, a ranked lobby, play match, endless raid, what have you, it doesn't matter. If their name is red rather than white, then this means that that player specifically is a mass rage quitter. They rage quit when they are about to lose or when they do actually lose, but because of how the universe works as of right now, it doesn't count it as a win or as a loss. It counts it as a no contest. Again, that's only if they have a red name rather than a white name. Certain skills if fully charged and if you're in a Super Saiyan transformation can teleport. These skills include Kamehameha, the times 10 Kamehameha, as well as the fully charged Big Bang Kamehameha, as well as evil explosion. You can actually find a super Dragon Ball radar as an accessory near the Dragon Ball pedestal in Canton City. Now, unfortunately, for the purposes of this video, I wasn't able to find one. Just go and reload the game as in make a parallel quest room or what have you, or just restart the game in general. Then go to this area here and then pick up all the items on the ground and eventually you will find a super Dragon Ball radar accessory that you can actually wear. There's actually a voice from Team Four Star that you can actually have as the voice for your playable character, your cack. Take a listen. Stop. Believe it. Ha! Stop. Huh? Ha? Huh? Daddy! Yep. <clears throat> The music that plays in Canton City will have this instrument playing depending on how far away you go from the city. Once again, take a listen. If you pick this eye option here, and I believe there's another one at least as well, but then transform into a Super Saiyan 3 on your Saiyan CAC, your eyes will completely, in every way, shape, and form, your eyes will completely change into what you would expect to see from a Super Saiyan 3. Going from Xenoverse 1, the original Dragon Ball Xenoverse game, to Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, a couple of characters were removed, a couple of playable characters, those being Venus Mold, Xenal Trunks, Venus Mold, Vegeta, Venus Mold, Ultimate Gohan, as well as Venus Mold, Super Saiyan 3 Gold Tanks, as well as a few more. Now for this next one, I'm not entirely sure if this was a glitch or if it's been removed from the game, but if you used Emperor Sign in a team battle and you used it and you were a freeze race character, you can make your teammates move at beyond what looks like modded speed. Again, I don't know if this is still in the game or if it's been changed or what have you, but it can make for some pretty interesting results regardless. If you're hit with Spirit Sword, you won't be able to use a Limit Burst to then protect yourself by, for example, using an Invasive or what have you. 
If you're hit with it as well, as you're trying to limit burst, it will pause it or just stop it and you just can't limit burst out of Spirit Sword again if you're hit with said attack. It is technically possible to make a completely neutral Q, Q, bang, as in it doesn't give you any plus or any minus points to the six given stats. I did try to make one for the purposes of this video, but I believe it's completely RNG. So with that said, if you guys know of any recipes to make a completely neutral Q, Q, bang, please do let us know what they are in the comments, as I do want one just for the sake of saying that I have a neutral QQ bang. You can't access the Freezer Time Rift if the Freezer Force Invasion event is on in Canton City. Now, again, for the purposes of this video, I couldn't get any footage of that specifically just because the Freezer Invasion event is a timed event in Xenoverse 2. It comes on every couple of months or every... X amount of time. I don't know when, well, I don't know how long that is. It, it is pretty much random when it happens. But again, for the purposes of this video, unfortunately, I couldn't get any footage of that specifically just because the event wasn't on. The rock, paper, scissors super attack is different depending on which input you select. The screen total, naturally, those are rock, paper, and you guessed it scissors there are two skills in xenoverse 2 with the exact same name that is the super explosive wave the first one is the evasive skill and the second one is a key based super attack which can also be used to well you can go for backflip before you click it if you click l1 downwards and it launches a sort of like a miniature version of the full power energy wave ultimate attack final form mirror heavily resembles super saiyan 5 from the fan-made dragon ball af manga and the more i look at it the more i think yeah the the resemblance is rather uncanny maybe with the exception of raid characters custom full power super saiyan broly from the dragon ball super broly movie has the most health out of any other character in dragon ball xenoverse 2 there's a character in Canton city by the name of tolsok where if you go and talk to him you can level up all the way from level one all the way to level 99 by using Zenny from level 1 to level 80 and then using TP medals from level 81 to level 99. You can do this immediately as long as you have the necessary Zenny and TP medals and if you've already prior unlocked your potential to get to level 99 on a different character by talking to Guru in the Namek time rift you can recover stamina at a much much faster rate if you're on a solid surface rather than if you were flying keep in mind invisible grounds do not count if you use an ultimate attack on your opponent but you don't lock on to your opponent they will not receive that sort of heads up display alert on the side of the screen depending on the opponent the situation as well as the skill for example a great skill to use for this specific situation will be again for example the super key explosion ultimate attack you can pretty much win a fight, basically, especially if you've just exited a clash. Nappa, as a custom mentor, has the ability to turn Super Saiyan. But funnily enough, if you do turn Super Saiyan on custom Nappa, his toupee will disappear. It won't turn golden. It won't stay the same color. It will just flat out disappear. But funnily enough, his toupee will return if you then revert back to Nappa's base form. If you access your play trends in play data, you'll get a couple of play trends which indicates or claims that you have certain favorite characters, favorite skills, and stuff like that. Although this technically is wrong, at least to some point, because it may not actually be your personal favorite skill, super attack, ultimate attack, character or have you what this actually is is the characters and skills and stuff like that that you've actually used the most not your technical favorite again super attack ultimate 
finisher, I think it is, as well as character. Mirror's presets are called Universe 7 Clothing, and then 1, 2, 3, and 4, depending on the preset. This is interesting because given that it's specifically labeled as Universe 7, you would think that this may indicate that there's other versions of Mirror in different universes. For example, universes 1 through 12. Who knows, maybe a hint at a future game. Again, who knows, we'll have to wait and see. By using an additional input on Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta's Super Kamehameha, you can absorb it to get an attack increase. Janemba, as well as Fu, as well as technically Villainous Mode Janemba, as well as Custom Janemba, all have unique vanishes as opposed to the traditional teleport vanish. When you go and select to make a character, if you then back out of the selection, you may experience a unique animation, a sort of like foot stomp animation, which is nowhere else to be seen in the entire game. You can increase the damage of dual ultimate attacks if you increase this bar on the left of the mental icon, this little like blue, green, turquoisey color mental bar, the higher it goes. The Hakai, also known as officially in Xenoverse 2, the destructive fission will go through pretty much every other key based attack. I think maybe one exception is the divine Kamehameha, but apart from that, it will go through pretty much every other key based super attack as well as every key based ultimate attack. The margin mark accessory will completely disappear if you transform into a super sane free. There's never been an explanation towards this or a fix to this, so I don't know if this is intended to show, oh, how strong super sane free is. Maybe, I don't know, or more likely, it's just an oversight or a glitch that's so unimportant they decided not to fix it, at least not as of right now. But yeah, if you transform from base form or from Super Saiyan 1 or Super Saiyan 2 to then Super Saiyan 3, the margin mark accessory will completely disappear and it will return the moment you drop out of Super Saiyan 3. Potential unleashed on Ultimate Gohan, or rather Adult Gohan, and Potential Unleashed for your custom character, although they are the same Awoken skill, the same skill, they are technically just a little bit different from one another. On Gohan, well, the appearance is different from Gohan to your custom character, and the shading and lighting is different as well. There are several tiers of Hercule badges in Xenoverse 2. The main reason for these are just to sell to get a lot of Zenny in return. You can also, if you want, use these as mixing items when you mix them to make a QQ bang. But honestly, for the most part, well, not even for the most part, there are several better mixing items you can use to make a QQ bang rather than using the Hercule badges. Going back to an earlier fact in this video, if you have all seven Dragon Balls that make a brand new character or talk to this character here in Canton City after defeating Raditz, instead of getting another Dragon Ball, you'll get a Hercule badge. But again, that's only if you have all seven Dragon Balls. You can actually charge your, well, chargeable Key Blast by holding down, at least on PS4, PS5, Circle, and you'll get this little bit of an effect here. This will either make them stronger or prolong them to therefore make it stronger in the case of the Key Blast Barrage key type. Patrick states the English voice actor for Dio in the English dub of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure as well as Jiren in the English dub of Dragon Ball Super is also a voice you can pick for your custom character in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. A bit of a bonus fact here, before Patrick Sates was cast as the English voice actor for Jiren, there was actually a different voice actor who I believe was only cast as Jiren just for the English dub of Xenoverse 2. But with that said, do take a listen to some of his lines if you do decide to pick this for the voice of your custom character. <laughs> Whoops. A 
Awoken hit and by extension, custom Awoken hit is considered to be the absolute best cast character to play as in all of Dragon Ball Xenoverse. Two, there's a few reasons for this, but it's mostly because of the fact that he's just easy to learn and easy to play as. He's incredibly fast. He's got an absolutely devastating infinite combo that if you get your stamina broken, it's pretty much game at that point. As well as the fact that if you go for both stages of pure progress, his damage just goes through the roof and that, well, both stages of pure progress are permanent awoken skills. So even if you're knocked out, I don't believe you go back to your base form. He's incredibly broken and overpowered. As of this recording, which will be before Legendary Pack 2 is released, in terms of Awoken skills that have been added in the game since the game was released, first it was Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken and Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken times 10 just for Goku, then Super Saiyan Blue, then Super Saiyan Blue Evolution, then Super Saiyan God, going in a sort of reverse order in terms of strength and just general stuff like that. Despite what your custom character looks like, if you use any of these super ghost attacks, they will just look like either Gotenks or Boo, depending on which version you use again, regardless of what your custom character's appearance is. Buhan has the longest grab in the game. Modders on the PC version of Xenoverse 2 have been able to, I guess, data mine or what have you, a file in the game which has deflection physics for at least key based ultimate attacks and presumably as well key based super attacks, as you can see right here. It's assumed that these weren't implemented into the game because of how broken it may make things or just through balancing issues apparently and i may be wrong here but apparently if you were to do this it would take away stamina or rather it would require stamina to deflect this is absolutely fantastic this is something that i didn't know at all going into this video and yeah this is insane Wow. <laughs> the playable model for Supreme Kai of Time has been significantly updated and is now more detailed compared to the non-playable model of the Supreme Kai of Time. This is widely speculated to be because of the fact that this was maybe planned for a third Dragon Ball Xenoverse game, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 3, but was ported over, I guess is the word, to Xenoverse 2 to continue with the updates. As of Legendary Pack 1, there are 31 different presets of Goku in Xenoverse 2. Keep in mind, this is just purely of Goku, so this is not including Fusion, Zamasu or Goku Black. By clicking left on the D-pad, at least on the PS4 and PS5 version of Xenoverse 2, you can go into Skelter to Mode and you can actually see what skills, with the exception of the Awoken skill, your opponent has on their character, as well as what their power levels are. And speaking of Skelters, your Skelter perspective will change colour depending on what colour of Skelter you're wearing, even including the Golden Skelter. If you go all the way to the ceiling when you're battling against a Great Ape, for example, in the, well, at the end of the Saiyan Saga story mode, they won't be able to hit you at all. Kefla has two different grabs. These can be activated automatically if you're standing on the ground or if you're flying. Vegeta is the only character with several presets where the aura changes color depending on which preset of Vegeta you pick. If you pick the first few presets, for example, the Skelter versions and the Planet Namek versions of Vegeta, his aura will be red. If you pick the later versions from, for example, the End or the Boo Saga of Dragon Ball Z, as well as the Resurrection of F Saiyan Above God preset of Vegeta, his aura will be blue. There is a mechanic in the game which is officially known as a Just Guard. This is when your timing is perfect and you get a block that looks something like this although it's more commonly referred to as in the community as a perfect block 
rather than a just god. If your timing is perfect when you play as Super Saiyan God Vegeta, you will do increased damage and you'll get a different sound effect. Villainous mold characters have no super souls, therefore they can't limit burst. Although I don't believe it's ever been explained why they don't have any super souls, it's more than likely for a balancing reason because these tend to be much stronger characters than a normal character and they have a key charge which also recovers stamina and key at the same time. Keep in mind, it does have a priority on key. So when you have max key, it will stop charging even if you don't have max stamina. Again, it's never explained. That's more than likely the reason why, but in terms of the law, I guess, it could be assumed that it's because they sold their souls, maybe, to get an increased power up, maybe so sell your soul, super soul, Let's move on. <laughs> There's a way to unlock several skills in one go, and that is to defeat or rather to win in the Crystal Raid mode. Regardless of which team you're on, as in if you're the raid boss or one of the raid bosses in the 2 versus 4 Crystal Raid mode, or if you're battling against the raid boss or the raid bosses. Keep in mind, I believe for DLC, you'll need the appropriate DLC pack, and I don't think it includes skills from every single DLC pack, but I may be wrong on that, and I don't believe it includes the Supreme Kai of Time skills either. You were able to vote for a future character in Xenoverse 2 via the Canton City Hero Vault. There were five options here you could pick from, those being Ultra Instinct Sign Goku, Bagamo, Dispo, GT Vegeta from Dragon Ball GT, as well as Android 18 from Dragon Ball Super. If you use the Kaioken times 20 Awoken skill, so using Kaioken when you have five or more bars of key to then go into Kaioken times 20, you will be able to vanish as much as you want without it actually draining any stamina per vanish. But do keep in mind that your stamina will constantly slowly drain, but again, it's not going to take any stamina away from you when you vanish. Much like in previous Dragon Ball games, Hercule has a jetpack so he can actually fly. If you use the times 20 Kaioken Kamehameha ultimate attack on Goku and you're playing in the English dub in Xenoverse 2, at the end of the attack, the voice will go into Japanese. Do take a listen because it is pretty funny. If you use the Photon Swipe Super Attack against the Gigantic Key Blast in a raid, it will automatically send the Gigantic Key Blast back. I would assume that this is a glitch, so this may change at some point in the future, but as of right now, with one Photon Swipe, and I think it may also work with other skills such as the Darkness Eye Beam, but I'm not entirely sure about that specifically. But again, using the Photon Swipe Super Attack against the Gigantic Key Blast when the Beam Struggle or the Struggle, we have to try and send it back to the raid boss, you know, happens in the online raids. It will, just using it once, which takes one bar of key to use, again, it will instantly send that gigantic key blast back and you'll get a lot of points and more than likely end up in first place. Despite beam clashes or beam struggles, whatever you want to call them, not currently in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, depending on which two attacks hit each other, you'll get effects that look like this. If you already have all three of the current raid bosses unlocked, last three being Demigra, Final Four Mirror, and Corrupted Merged Zamasu, and then you rebuy those gifts and then talk to Fu again and hand over those gifts, he'll then instead, because you've already got those characters unlocked, he'll then instead give you 10 Demon Realm Crystals per gift you give him. If you talk to this robot here, you can get information on past updates that were added to Xenoverse 2. If you look carefully at the Xenoverse 2 title menu, in the XV, you can actually see the Toki Toki City 
Hourglass, despite this not making an appearance in Xenoverse 2, with the exception of, I believe, just one mission in the Xenoverse 2 story mode, where you go back in time to just before Trunks summons Shenron, back in the original Xenoverse game. And speaking of the Xenoverse 2 title menu, because this is the second Dragon Ball Xenoverse game, there is a two-star Dragon Ball on the title menu and back in the original Xenoverse game, because it's naturally the first Dragon Ball Xenoverse game, there was a one-star Dragon Ball. So hopefully if Xenoverse 3 happens, They'll continue this little bit of a tradition with a, well, with the third star Dragon Ball. Female custom Saiyan characters will keep their eyebrows when they use Super Saiyan 3. Now, in all fairness, I want to say this may be was already a thing in Dragon Ball Heroes at the time, and technically as well, Super Dragon Ball Heroes for female Saiyans. But yeah, just interesting how in Xenoverse 2, a female Saiyan will keep their eyebrows unlike a male Saiyan if they use Super Saiyan 3. There's two different versions of the Darkness Rush Ultimate Attack in Dragon Ball Universe 2. The melee version, which only Saiyans, Earthlings, the Margin Race, as well as the Freeze Race can use, and the ranged version, which is only usable by Namekian Kax custom characters, avatars, again, whatever you want to call it. But funnily enough, if you use the Dual Darkness Rush on a Namekian custom character, they use the melee version, not the ranged version, even though as of right now, Namekians cannot use or even equip the melee version of Darkness Rush, only the ranged version. And side note, or a bit of a, a bit of an extra fact here, even though Margins have stretchy arms like Namekians, they can also only use the melee version of Darkness Rush, not the ranged version. There's a free version of Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 that you can play literally right now, which is Dragon Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 Lite. Keep in mind there are a fair few restrictions here. For example, you cannot make a Saiyan or a Freezer race custom character. You only have five character slots rather than eight. You can only get to level 50. You can only get to a certain point in the game in terms of the story and parallel quests and just general restrictions. Like it's, it's sort of like to give you a taste of what Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 can be be and what it is but do keep in mind that you can do a data transfer from dragon balls in verse 2 light to the full version of dragon balls in verse 2 i believe the way you do this is if you play the light version and you have a save data then you get the full version of Xenoverse 2 you'll then get a prompt if you want to transfer your data from the light version to the full game and you can continue from where you left off in the light version of dragon ball Xenoverse 2. In the free update, which accompanied Legendary Pack 1 for Xenoverse 2, a new character was added to Canton City named Stylist, or rather The Stylist. Now, this is one you go to to change like, your hair and stuff like that for, I believe, 10 TP medals. Now, keep in mind, apparently in Xenoverse 1, in the files, there is something called Barber, like a barber to, to presumably change your hair instead of having to get the Dragon Balls, then summon Shenron each and every single time. But this naturally in Xenoverse 1 was never added. But something very similar, again, known as the Stylist, was added to a fairly late update to Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. The first ever Canton City TV broadcast. <laughs> it's still funny. It didn't work. After months of promotion and Elder Kai and Trunks and Supreme Kai of Time talking once you went back into the city, promoting it, once the first broadcast happened and you had the 30 second countdown, once it hit zero, no video played, just artwork. <laughs> This was a mistake, or rather it was an error, or what have you, and they did apologize for it, but it's just interesting to note that this was the same broadcast that really kicked off Legendary Pack 2 in terms of what we could expect and stuff like that, given at the end of that trailer was when we had the reveal, or rather the tease, of full Power Jiren, 
later to be added into Legendary Pack 2 DLC 13 for Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. Canton City, the old world, the hub world, we're going to call it, for Xenoverse 2 is technically Tolki, Tolki City, the of world, hub world, again, we want to call it, for the original Dragon Ball Xenoverse game. The reason why it changed, and I believe this is in the Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 manga, is because of these, well, the time rifts in Xenoverse 2. Apparently, there was loads of laws appearing and it, the city couldn't be contained. So I believe there was Supreme Kai of Time with, I think, maybe Elder Kai. They then expanded it into what is now known as Canton City. If you're a margin custom character, there will be more margins at Margin Boo's house at the Margin Boo Time Rift. How many times did I say Margin Boo? Feel free to count. There'll be more margins there if you're a margin character as opposed to if you're a Saiyan character, an Earthling, a Freeze Race, and a Namekian. Custom Goku can use Divine Lasso, one of the signature skills for Super Saiyan Rose Goku Black. The Tapion outfit, regardless of which version, they are all incredibly rare items to get in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. The reason for this is because I believe, honestly, all of them, I think, as of this upload, I believe they've all only been available to get once, and that was for getting a certain amount of points in, I forget if it was in a world tournament or in ranked matches in a set amount of time. After defeating Final Form Mirror at the end of the normal Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 story mode, Final Form Mirror only appears one more time, and that is in this parallel quest right here. Both the gigantic blue statue of Shenron in Canton City, as well as the summonable Shenron in Canton City they can use to make various in-game wishes on, technically isn't Shenron, or at the very least, it's not the Earth version of Shenron as this was created by the Supreme Kai of Time. There's various Super Souls in Xenoverse 2 that belong to characters or different forms of characters that aren't currently in the game or even in the Xenoverse series as of right now. These include Super Namekian, or rather the giant version of Piccolo from the original Dragon Ball, as well as characters such as Android 19 and Dr. Jello. Tien has a Super Soul, which is also available for your custom characters in Xenoverse 2, which completely nullifies damage from any Kamehameha skill. Although, do keep in mind, this does not include the Breaker Energy Wave, which technically is also known as the Angry Kamehameha. You can instantly revive a fallen teammate by using something that's known as a Flash Revive. Do keep in mind, though, that although this will instantly revive them, it does take away a pretty decent amount of your health. If you have 99 of a certain item, as in you have maxed out a certain item and can't get any more, then you get that certain item either as a reward from a parallel quest, or a login bonus, or from picking it up in Canton City, Instead of getting an additional item, you will just get a certain amount of Zenny. Basic Key Blasts have no effect at all on God of Destruction Topo because of his Hakoshin, or whatever you call it, his Destroyer Energy, his Aura. Keep in mind, though, that they do technically work on him and it will do damage and stun him and stuff like that if he's not in a position to sort of like protect himself. But if you just spam basic key blasts on God of Destruction Topo, as you can see right here, they'll just have no effect on him at all. You can make one free Hero Coliseum figurine summon each day. To get past level 80, to get to level 81 and onwards up until level 99, you'll need to clear several of the Protecting Planet Namek missions, the Guru Namek missions, whatever you want to call them. I forget off the top of my head 
hell exactly to do this, but I do believe first you'll need to be level 80 and then clear a certain amount of the protecting planet Namek missions. I think it's either 7 or 14, but I might be wrong there. And then you'll be invited to talk to Guru and he'll then unlock your potential. So you can then level up past level 80 to again, level 81 and onwards up until max level, which is level 99. And for fact number 100, there is a data transfer feature in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. If you played the first Xenoverse game and had save data, you could transfer your data and your well and one character to participate in the Xenoverse 2 story mode along with your Xenoverse 2 custom characters. And that character will also occasionally appear as part of the Toki Toki City hero in the middle of Canton City where that hologram statue thing is. And also can transfer certain skills from Xenoverse 1 to Xenoverse 2 as well as your outfit and stuff like that. To get them near, well pretty much at the very start of the Xenoverse 2 story mode just after you defeat Raditz. And that was 100 facts tips, tricks, trivia, and things in general that you just may not have known about Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I had a ton of fun doing this. I would love to do a part two, maybe even a part three at some point, or just make this a series in general on the channel. But if I do that, I'll probably need you guys to leave in the comments your own tips, tricks, trivia, facts, things you didn't know, stuff like that about Xenoverse 2. Maybe even and or both Xenoverse 1, the light version or what have you. And I'll do again a part 2, part 3 or what have you at some point in the future. I'll pick the best ones to use for those videos. Again, do feel free to do that in the comments. Thank you ever so much. And just to wrap things up rather quickly, cold CAC, my G Fuel discount code. Feel free to use that on G Fuel on checkout to save between 10 and a gigantic 30% off your total G Fuel order if you use that code on checkout. Again, cold CAC C A C on checkout on G Fuel to save between 10 and 30% off your total G Fuel order. I don't know if it's going to be 10% or 30% by the time you watch this video or even when this video is first uploaded. To so just check anyway because it's a fantastic deal either way. Thank you guys ever so much for watching the video. I do honestly hope you enjoyed it. And with that said, I will see you next time.